seeking asylum in America. In a glowing profile, CNN profiles Nicole Contreras, who's a Honduran biological male, who wants to come to this country to claim asylum so that he can more easily identify as a woman. Contreras is part of that caravan headed for the United States. When he arrives, he will doubtless receive thousands in benefits, legal assistance, probably medical care. Will that make this a better country? I don't know. CNN thinks so. So celebrate it. Meanwhile, in New York, they love Chick-fil-A in New York. One Manhattan location says it sells a chicken sandwich every six seconds of the day. The New Yorker magazine, by contrast, does not love Chick-fil-A. A new piece in The New Yorker calls the restaurant, quote, creepy. Why? Quote, the brand's arrival here feels like an infiltration, in no small part because of its pervasive Christian traditionalism, end quote. Think about this. In the largest city in the country, a country that has been majority Christian for its entire history as a country, there is now a restaurant that is owned by Christians, and that is offensive, says the New Yorker magazine. It's creepy. In fact, it's an infiltration. Meanwhile, every other corner in Midtown has a halal cart manned by a guy who grew up 6,000 miles from here and barely speaks English. But that's not an infiltration. It's diversity, and if you don't celebrate it, you must be punished. Ha! Has any country taking three steps back, ever had a less impressive intellectual class than ours currently does. Mark Stein has studied the history of intellectual classes through history, and he joins us tonight with a verdict on that. <laughs> well, I, I have studied the New Yorker. I mean, I haven't read it in a long while, but I can <laughs> safely say this appallingly written piece would never have run uh, under Harold Ross or even uh, Tina Brown in the good it's old true. days. Uh, th this, this sentence I love. The rest, this guy is upset because, quote, the restaurant's corporate purpose still begins with the words to glorify God. It still begins the, with the words to glorify God because God is so 2013. Anthony Kennedy <laughs> ruled that... Anthony Kennedy ruled that God is outmoded and uh, now uh, you cannot, it's offensive to be served a chicken sandwich made by a guy who believes in the same definition of marriage as Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton did 10 years ago. So this guy is saying we can't tolerate Christian traditionalists serving us uh, their homophobic uh, chicken sandwiches. We, al we already know a Christian, a so-called pervasive Christian traditionalist can't be a Hollywood producer, he can't be a New Yorker columnist, he can't be a Broadway choreographer, and now he can't even make you a lousy homophobic chicken sandwich. But so what's all in the Chris all the Christian traditionalists should be out of work, sleeping under a bridge, and uh, sleeping under the Brooklyn Bridge. What's so weird, though, is that the halal guy, not, and some of them are super nice mm. and I like their food, not attacking the halal mm. guys, but if you pressed mm. on their attitudes on these same issues, they're oh, yeah. way more medieval than the Chick-fil-A guys, and yet the New Yorker loves them. Why is that? Oh, no, no, no. I like the halal food. I'm not yeah. on board with the, the throwing the gays off buildings or, or, <laughs> or the, main, the main doctrinal dispute. I had this from Imam Karadawi. His main doctrinal dispute is whether you should throw gays off tall buildings or burn them alive. That would be a fascinating thing for this big butch New Yorker guy to take against. You mentioned Venezuela. Uh, Sitgo stations are all over New York, and the president of the company is Hugo Chavez's cousin. And in Venezuela right now, they're actually eating domestic animals. They're not eating homophobic chicken. They're eating their own dogs and cats because of what they've done to them. <laughs> We're lacking perspective, I would say, on some of these issues, yeah. but I appreciate you bringing it as you always do. Mark Stein, thank you. Thanks a lot, Tucker. Do you remember Governor Rod Blagojevich of Illinois? He was a governor, then a celebrity apprentice contestant, and now he's behind bars. His last hope for getting out of jail early is the president. The developments in that case, which are interesting, just ahead.